quality control in the laboratory may be defined by different parameters and these parameters are sensitivity, specificity, accuracy, precision, repeatability, and reproducibility. Parameters in quality control are different measurements that are done on a set of data. These six different performance parameters are monitored by different techniques and procedures to make sure that quality is always done inside the laboratory. Let's now discuss the different parameters of quality control. So I'll be giving different definitions and then you'll try to see which one of the six parameters we are referring to. So the first one is an indication of how close the answer obtained lies to the true value. So we have a clue word here which is true value. What do we mean by true value? True value refers to the value consistent with a given quantity. So this is a known um, value. When we say true value, we are referring to what we are intended to measure. For example, if a patient is diabetic and she has a fasting blood sugar of 450 in her system. If we obtain her sample and test it and we get 450 as a result for fasting blood sugar, then that means our test is reflecting the true value of the patient. But for example, if our result is far from 450, maybe higher, 500 or lower, 200, that means we were not able to reflect the true value of the patient. Kasi hindi yun dapat yung resulta niya. Dapat yung result niya 450. Pero nung tinest natin, yung specimen niya, hindi yun yung nakita natin. So which one do you think refers to the closeness of the value to a true value? The answer is accuracy. So simply put, accuracy will measure how close our tested value is to the true value. How, um, how far is it or how close it is to the true value. So we are describing what we are supposed to be measured. Did we get what we're supposed to measure? Did we give an accurate result to the measurement? Accuracy may also be called, in other terms, validity. To give another example, we usually use a uh, target uh, chart. So the center of the chart would mean the true value. So if the test result is located in the center, that means that they were able to get the true value of uh, the test. So among these five tests, which are the black dots, which one do you think gave an accurate result? It's the one at the center. So that means out of five tests, there is only one test that was able to reflect the true value. There is only one test that gave an accurate result. The rest of the results are not accurate. And when the test is not accurate, we call these as bias. For the second parameter, the definition is an indication of how close the values are to one another. So now we are looking at values if they are related to one another or if they are close to one another. The one earlier, accuracy, we are trying to see if the value is close to the true value. But this one, we are now describing them if they are close to each other. So which one do you think it is? The answer is precision. So simply put, this is how close the measurements are with each other. For the target chart, okay, as we have mentioned earlier, the center is the true value. But for precision, we are trying to see how they are with each other. So in this case, there is precision in testing. Because when you test one, for example, uh, let's use the uh, fasting blood sugar again. For example, we tested 450 the first time, and then the second time, it was close, 452. And then the third time, it's close again, 440, and then, and so on and so forth. So when you repeat the tests, they are very close to each other. You say that it is not precise when, for example, the first time you test the sample is 450. Kapag inulit mo, 
it becomes very far, maybe 600. Tapos kapag inulit mo alit, magiging 200. Kapag inulit mo, iba na naman yung result. That is what we call lack of precision. When they do not coincide with each other, when they are not close to one another. And this lack of precision is referred to as a random error. So in the laboratory, which of these two parameters should a test have? Should it be accurate or should it be precise? Is it important that the one we are testing would give the true value? Or is it important that the one our testings would be precise? So kapag inulit-ulit mo, same yung result na nakukuha mo. Which one is more important than the other? The answer is, they are both important. A test result should both be accurate and precise. So it should be like this in the target chart. That when you test it, it would reflect the true value. And when you repeat the test, it would also reflect the true value over and over again. This is what we want in our test results. Hindi pwedeng accurate lang. Hindi pwedeng precise lang. It should be both accurate and precise. Okay class, let's have an exercise. Let's see if you can differentiate the two parameters from each other. So with this chart, which one is it? Is it accurate or is it precise? Or is it both or is it neither? Answer is precise because both all of the all of the test results are together, they are very close to one another, so that means they have a good precision. But they are not accurate because they are not at the center. They are not reflecting the true value. Next, what about this one? Is this accurate or precise? So there are five testing results. You think this is accurate or is this precise? Answer is none. These tests are all low in accuracy and low in precision. Low in accuracy because not a single of these tests was able to reflect the true value and it is also low in precision because they are not close to each other. So this means class, kung kunwari, 450 dapat yung result mo for glucose, yung naging result mo for one test is 500, the other is 1000, the other is 100, the other is 350, Okay, lahat ng tinest mo mali, hindi sila nag-reflect ng 450 and lahat ng tinest mo kapag inulit-ulit mo, iba-iba yung result na binibigay. So this is the worst of all the testing results. Not accurate and not precise. Our third definition, the smallest concentration that can be measured accurately. So we only have four left. We have sensitivity, specificity, repeatability, and reproducibility. Which one would be accurately measuring a test even at a very small concentration? The answer is sensitivity. So when we say sensitivity, we are referring to the ability of the test to detect something even at a very minimal concentration. If this test has this ability, then that means that the test is highly sensitive. We can apply this in real life when sometimes you say, hmm, ang sensitive mo naman, konting biro lang, nagagalit ka na. It's the same principle. Yung konting natamaan mo lang, galit na. Tinignan mo lang, galit na. But in terms of testing, this is important. It is important that this test has this capability because in looking for diseases, we would like to be able to detect the the presence of the disease even at its minimal concentration. So that means our testings should be sensitive. Let's elaborate more on sensitivity before we proceed to the next. So sensitivity is a quality criteria for a test. Quality criteria because it would be able to identify persons with a disease. So let's use this picture for example. Now we have 10 persons here and all these 10 persons are sick. They have a disease. Let's use the very popular COVID right now. So let's say that all these 10 persons are sick. They have the virus in them. Okay. But when we tested them, 
only 8 of them returned to have a positive result. So 8 out of 10 are positive. We now call these as our true positive. Why true positive? Because that means they have the disease and they have a positive result. So totoong positive sila. We can now also say that the sensitivity of this test is 80% because 8 out of the 10 were positive. But what happens to the other two that tested negative? Remember, these two are also um, sick. Both of them also have COVID in their system. But the result is negative. We now call these as our false negative. Kasi hindi naman talaga dapat negative yung result nila. Dapat positive sila. So the result is negative. They are falsely negative. Now, quality criteria would mean that sensitivity is good for screening. Why is it good for screening? Usually, these are the uh, screening kits. They should have a high sensitivity. Why? So that they would be able to detect if there is a problem, if there is a disease present. What's important in screening is that you are able to capture all the ones that are truly positive. It should have a high sensitivity. For our next definition, the ability to measure the analyte of interest only. So this means that if you want to test for COVID, it should only detect COVID. If you want to test for HIV, it should only detect HIV. Which one is your answer? Answer is specificity. So the ability to represent the proper disease or the condition present is referred to as a test being specific. Let's discuss specificity further. When we say specific or specificity, it would identify the persons without the disease. Why? Because it's so specific that it can rule out the people who are negative. They can rule out the people who do not have the disease. So ito yung maselan uh, if we are to take it into layman's term. Now let's take these 10 persons again for example. Now these 10 persons are all negative they do not have the disease because as we have mentioned it would identify the persons without the disease so these people are negative let's say for example we are still looking for covid patients and these all do not have covid these are uh, people who do not harbor the virus so when we test them seven of them return negative which is good because they're not sick they don't have the they don't have the disease so 7 out of 10 tests negative, we now call them as the true negative because totoo silang negative. Negative sila na walang sakit and negative sila sa result. So they are true negative. Specificity then would be 70%. So it is 70% specific to identify that they do not have uh, COVID. So what happens to the other three that were tested to be positive? Remember, they should be negative kasi wala silang sakit. But they were positive. Maybe because COVID yung hanap natin, the test was not that specific kasi 70% specificity lang siya. Baka respiratory illness lang or asthma or any other thing. Okay, But it's not that specific. So it was not able to capture COVID itself. So these are our false positives. For our next definition, the degree to which repeated measurements under unchanged conditions show the same results. So we only have two choices left. We have repeatability and reproducibility. Our clue word here would be unchanged conditions. The answer is... Our answer is repeatability. So this is the ability to repeat the testing procedure in unchanged conditions. So that means the degree of consensus between successive measurements, so magkasunod na measurement that you have made with unchanged conditions. So same sample, same analyzer, same user, same med tech, same laboratory, same method, same lottery agent, same lahat ng conditions. So when you do a test and then you repeat it again and the results are the same, then that means that uh, the testing is has the capability of repeatability. 
And for our last definition, the degree to which repeated measurements under changed conditions show the same result, the answer is reproducibility. So our keyword here would be changed conditions. Repeatability, as mentioned earlier, is unchanged conditions. Everything is the same. While in reproducibility, there might have been some conditions that have changed. For example, you might have used a different analyzer or maybe a different medical technologist repeats the test or maybe a different reagent is used or it can also be that it was performed in a different laboratory. So these are in-between day experiments. Repeatability would be within day runs and reproducibility would be between day experiments. This is just to show the difference of repeatability and reproducibility. So in repeatability, everything is the same. Same person, same sample, same material, same equipment, same day. Okay, Usually just within hours, yeah, they should be successive testing. So if they give the same results, then it's repeatability. Reproducibility, on the other hand, may be uh, different persons performing different machines different everything on the same sample okay we are still talking about the same sample so kunwari meron kang gustong ulitin hindi na ikaw yung nagperform pinaulit mo sa kasama mong medtech tapos pareho yung results na nakuha ninyong dalawa then that means that there is reproducibility because there was a condition that was changed and that is the medtech now both repeatability and reproducibility are under Precision. So these are words that can describe precision. Remember, precision is to be able to get the same results over and over and over again. If the precision is done with the same conditions, then it's called precise repeatability. And if there are conditions that might have changed, we call this as precise reproducibility. And that would be all for the parameters used in quality control. Like and subscribe and watch the other videos in this channel. Thank you.